everybody, it's Heather Pastor, Artist Ambassador for Atlantic Center for the Arts. I'm here to um, lead you through uh, the Heal and Reveal workshop today. And I appreciate you um, being here online with me. This is something that is brand new for me, as it is probably for you as well. And I'm hoping that we can um, process some emotions. Um, not necessarily always grief, but I read an article the other day about, um, it was actually on the Harvard Business Journal, and it was, I want to read the title itself, it's called The Discomfort That You're Feeling Is, is Grief. And in this day and age, the things that we're dealing with on a daily basis, um, it was a great article, um, talking about how you can kind of take what's happening in the world today and 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 decide or it, it's very similar to what the, the types of emotions that you would experience if you were experiencing the loss of uh, somebody that you loved in your life. So this workshop is for everybody and especially now um, there's not a whole lot of us that that are lucky enough not to have felt the uh, grief of losing someone or something dear to us. But now we're dealing with a whole nother kind of strange kind of grief and losing the lifestyle that we've become accustomed to. So hopefully, like I said, this is something that will help you process whatever emotions are um, that you're feeling um, associated with that. The way that we like to start these um, programs, the arts and wellness programs through Atlantic Center for the Arts, is by doing some kind of a breathing or um, some kind of a breathing exercise or something to kind of get you into the mood, if you will, or to, um, to, to get a little bit more um, in the moment. So I have come across uh, an exercise, which if you've taken any of these programs with me before live, um, we start with a little, um, a little exercise that I learned from a woman named Denise Braun, and she is an artist and hypnotherapist, and I'm not going to try to hypnotize anybody into, uh, into a space where they're ready to create art, but it's a really amazing, uh, like really quick little thing that I think that you might find, um, will help you, it's supposed to help you get into the theta state, which is a, a theta brainwave state, which is supposed to be very good for your creativity. So let's see if we can't try to get into that state very quickly. And I've got about an hour with you today, so I want to make sure I get the entire, um, the entire program presented to you. I won't spend a whole lot of time with getting us started, um, but I want to make sure that you, um, that I can share this with you because I think it's pretty cool. So I um, came across Denise Braun through a Winged Messengers um, online workshop that I took called, um, well, it was an Ivy Newport is an artist who uh, has an entire uh, library and she invites all different artists in to do, to do different workshops with everybody. And Denise Braun is one of those artists. So you're going to need a whole lot of different um, supplies. So I'm not really sure how I should do this. I want to make sure that you have all your supplies together before we get started. There's nothing really that fancy, but I want you to be able to go and gather them before we get started. So if you haven't already, and of course I didn't write myself a list, but I have everything in front of me, you're going to need to grab... Uh, watercolor paper or something that's a thicker um, weight paper even if you have a um, like a cardstock or something like that we need something that'll hold up when we put some water on it so if there's a uh, mixed media paper or like a thick cardstock uh, watercolor paper is what I'm going to be using today 
You're going to need some broad tip markers, not permanent markers, but just regular broad tip Crayola markers maybe, or something along those lines. And I say broad tip because we're gonna be doing some coloring with them. And if you have a larger area to cover, then you want a larger tip to be able to cover it with. So it just won't take as long as if you had a thin or a fine tip marker. You're gonna need aluminum foil and just small piece, um, about the size of whatever paper you're gonna use. So like I have a nine by 12 piece of watercolor paper here. If you can get a piece of aluminum foil to torn off that's about that size, that's great. And it doesn't have to be the exact same size. Um, don't put too much thought into it. It's not, it's not that crucial. And then we're gonna need, um, if you have like a lighter weight paper, I like using scrapbooking paper you could use a regular white um, like copy paper or whatever you use in your printer at home. That would work fine as well. And you can do some of this decorating and um, color selection. You can do some of those things. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be right now with me. You might be able to, you know, you might be able or want to do something more with it um, later on or as time goes on. So... You're going to need a lightweight paper of some kind that's easy. It's really the, the importance here is that it's easy to fold. So, and I like the scrapbook papers because they have different patterns and beautiful colors. So, and you can choose something that is um, going to be complementary to the background that you're going to create. So, watercolor paper or a thick paper, um, scrapbooking paper or a lighter weight paper broad tip markers that are not permanent, aluminum foil, uh, glue stick if you have one. I prefer glue stick over like a regular Elmer's glue or glue wall. And a double-sided tape or a scotch tape that we can, you know, roll into a double-sided tape. And then if you have a little spray bottle, like something like this, that's great. Even if it's bigger than this, we're only going to need a couple quick squirts out of it. And if you don't have something like this, you can also use just like a little cup of water and we can um, just dip our fingers in it and, and, and use that. You'll need scissors, pencil, um, pen, or a fine tip like permanent pen, something like that, permanent marker. Um, like I have a fine tip or very fine tip Sharpie that I like. And then, uh, what else? I think that's it. I think that's all you're going to need. So, if you've got all of those supplies together, I want to go ahead and start with the, the little theta circles that we're going to create, or theta spirals. So, in order to do that, I'm going to, um, due to the formatting on my, my camera slash uh, phone, I'm going to have to flip the... Uh, phone down so that you can see what I'm doing on the surface of the table. I don't know that I can get everything in. So I will see you here in a moment. You'll still hear me. You just might not be able to see me. Okay. So I think we're good. Okay. So what I have in front of me right now is the watercolor paper. And I would suggest if you have like a pen or um, a thicker, you could even use one of the broad tip, that's what I'll use. I'll use one of the broad tip markers. We'll use one of those. So grab one of those markers and the thicker paper or the thinner paper, like I said, this is really just our quick um, meditation style exercise, something that we can do to kind of um, kind of release our inner critic and create get ourselves into a good headspace for creating something that will be intuitive and hopefully again, help us kind of process through whatever emotions we're feeling centered around grief or, or whatever, whatever you need, whatever you need today. So what I want to do is we're going to take the marker and I want you to concentrate on it the tip of the marker when you're doing these spirals. So for anyone who's out there watching that doesn't know um, how to do a spiral, what I mean by that when I say that is this is a spiral or something like it. Hopefully you can see that. 
we're going to create some spirals and I would probably start in the center and work your way out. We're going to do, let's do three of them and we're going to do them um, in a very specific way. So watch the tip of your marker and for about 15 to 20 seconds and I'll do a quick little time on it and I'll say stop and when I say stop do five dots in the center and then we're going to take a deep breath. Okay, so let's get started. Got your marker, got your paper, and we're gonna start our, we go ahead and put the tip of the marker on the paper and then start drawing a spiral. Stop, one, two, three, Four, five, and a deep breath. We're going to do two more of those. Okay. So get that. And be concentrating again on the tip of the marker as you're doing this. Ready? Go. Stop. One, two, three, four, five. And a deep breath. Okay, we're going to do one last one. Go. Up. One, two, three, four, five. And another deep breath. Now, ordinarily, you could do, see, I already feel relaxed. Um, you could do more than that, but it's a really great exercise in um, getting you started for really any art that you create, but it's a great kind of little meditation on paper, if you will. Sometimes I have a hard time kind of shutting out um, everything that's going on. And this is just a fun, a fun exercise that has a real good purpose. It has a purpose. And, and again, trying to get those theta waves, the creativity waves um, popping. So sometimes I'll do a page like this um, and then I'll actually create on top of it. So today you could do that. You could use this as a, as a base for your background. The project that we're going to be completing, which you've probably seen a photo of um, so far, if you've been on Facebook at all or gotten my emails, um, this is the project we're going to create. So we're creating our background first, which is what we're going to use, the aluminum foil and the uh, thicker grade paper, again, like watercolor or mixed media or even a uh, cardstock. Um, I would suggest probably using white if you have it, which I didn't specify before, but you could probably use any color, I suppose. And then we're going to create these little envelopes, which is going to create, um, I'm not much, or I'm not very good at origami, but these are simple, very simple, and I'll show you why I love them and, and kind of their significance to, to this project itself. So... I was just thinking, I'm not sure that I introduced myself. <laughs> I get so nervous when I get started on these. Um, but if you missed it before, it's Heather Pastor, Artist Ambassador for Atlantic Center for the Arts. And I'm excited to be uh, sharing this project with you for the arts and wellness programs at Atlantic Center for the Arts. And this is Heal and Reveal. Okay, so now I gotta make sure. And hopefully you all did the pre-survey. Uh, they asked that everybody did that, kind of get a baseline on how everyone's feeling before the workshop. And then I believe there's also going to be a post survey as well. So a post project survey. So if you'll look for those. Okay. So, and then the idea again behind this was we're going to create these little envelopes and then inside, which I haven't written any little messages in mine, but the idea was or the thought process that I had in creating it was that you could 
I really enjoy the, the artistic process, the visual art. I also love to write. And I find that uh, there's a lot of, I am not an art therapist, but there's a lot of things that I can work out in words and um, conscious streams of thought that I uh, throw down on paper. I always reference like The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. It's a book that I've thoroughly enjoyed, changed my life to be honest. And she does morning pages, which are three pages of literally when you wake in the morning, writing your stream of consciousness. It could be as silly as, I don't wanna write these pages, I'm too tired. This pen's going to run out, um, but there's amazing revelations that come with that. And, and those can be beneficial to, you know, no matter what you're going through, no matter what hiccup in life you have, you're having, it's just, it's amazing. I, I can't even, I couldn't stress it enough. So these don't have to be stream of consciousness, but they could be, originally the thought I had was uh, letters to, um, past, present, and future selves. Um, you could put any number of things um, in these little envelopes. And then um, I know that there's also Laura Bond does the expressive art journaling course workshop. And this would make a really cool page for an art journal as well. So if, it's, if there's something that, you know, if you're trying to mix it up a little bit, these little envelopes, we, we're going to adhere them to the um, to our background, but you could keep these separate. I don't know. There's just any number of ways that you could that you could use all of these pieces that I'm going to introduce to you here right now. So here's our finished product. What we're going to do right now, and I'm going to flip mine over just so there's no confusion, but if you want to, you can print on this side as well, but I'm going to flip it to the blank side. So... I want you to take that piece of aluminum foil that you have. I'm just going to move that up and out of the way. And you could choose the markers and the colors that you want to, to do or to use in your piece of artwork today intuitively. Just open up your package of markers and pick the colors that speak to you in this moment. Or you could be very... Um, analytic like I tend to be and um, choose colors based on the kinds of emotions that they convey. I'm going to try to be intuitive today. I'm just going to break out of that my usual thing and try to do something a little different. So I would start with a couple two or three markers and you want to make sure that you stick with colors that what I, I always say play well together. So um, complementary colors like blue and orange, they tend to create a muddy color, brown or gray. So if you want to keep your background a really, what we're going to be creating um, is the background. So like we're working on this piece first. Um, so you want to probably keep it, I don't know, maybe you're not feeling very cheerful today. Maybe you want some darker colors. You can you can use whatever colors you want. Um, you could use brown if you've got it in your um, in your marker package, or you could use gray. I happen to have both. I'm a lover of color, so I'm choosing to I'm gonna use some other some other options. I think I'm gonna do some like pinks and blues. So uh, red and blue will turn into violet for those of you who don't do a lot of color mixing. Um, reds, pinks, blues. Otherwise you might want to stay with like a cool color combination, your blues and violets and greens. What's going to happen here is we're not, we don't want to do anything that's very, um, we don't want to do anything that's detailed. So I would stick to patterns. You could use some of the spirals that we just created if you wanted. We're going to take the marker, it doesn't matter what side of the aluminum foil that you do this on. And I'm not sure, maybe I need to use some darker colors on this aluminum foil so that you can see it better. But you can literally, we're just, we're going to be drawing some kind of fun pattern. I always tell everybody, to, again, to keep it pretty, pretty neutral. You don't want to do anything really detailed. What you do is not going to show up as you see it. Not even close. So 
Um, just have fun with it. Kind of, you could do even a bunch of scribbles. If you want to do a rainbow or something, just make sure that you keep, you know, the colors in their uh, rainbow order so that they don't mix up and get really muddy on you. So we're, and we're using our non-permanent markers for this. Um, I'm going to throw some darker blue. So the first part of this is, again... Just creating pattern. You could do some stripes. You could do some crosshatch. Just stripes on top of stripes in the opposite direction. Um, what else could we do? We could do some hearts. You could make this. This is really hard for me because I don't do things. This, <laughs> I'm usually very linear. I'm a type A artist, I call myself. Um because doing all these different types of patterns on one piece of aluminum foil is like kind of setting my mind a little crazy right now. <laughs> uh, makes me so uncomfortable. So if I'm breaking out of that today, right? I was trying to choose some things that would be um, choosing things, choosing my colors intuitively. So, and I know all these colors will play well together. And maybe you do a couple of these. So I'll walk you through one and then maybe along, you know, again, when I'm not around, you want to try and play. Um, when I've done this project in the past, I usually say to do a couple, two or three of these pieces of aluminum foil. And it doesn't have to be all colored in pretty, you know, it can be scribbly. Um... Again, it's not going to look anything like this, so. Okay. So, hopefully you can see that. You're not getting too much. You know, my lighting in here is a little funky. Okay, so this is my crazy patterned piece of aluminum foil with, again, whatever non-permanent markers you want to use. And we're going to put some water on this. So this is where I was telling you, you can either use the, um, the little spray bottle if you have one, or you can use a little cup of water. So I'll do like half and half just so you can see what it is uh, either way. So if you have the little spray bottle, um, you have to be a little bit careful that you don't overwater it. It's kind of like a, a, a plant. Don't want to overwater it or underwater it. So I usually start with like maybe if you have a spritzer like this, like two little quick spritzes on a piece like this size. And it's about the same size as my, as my paper. I know you probably can't see them both next to each other the way I have this. But um, it might be a little trickier with the water on your fingers because we're going to have to... Um, you're just gonna have to be really careful you don't get a big a big puddle. So I'll do a little bit with this. So just start with like maybe one or two spritzes on top of your beautiful design here. And what we're gonna do is we just want to set those markers in motion. So you'll see what happens when we add the water because we've done this on the aluminum foil, it's gonna set all that ink kind of floating around. And I wanna get my hands on this real quick. Okay. So, I'm going to spritz this, and, and you can see it doesn't take much. And then I'm also going to take a little bit on my fingers and just drop it, maybe flick it. I think flicking will probably work better, little flicks. And you might need more of that than you did with the... So you can experiment. Like I said, you can do more than one of these. I'm just going to do one for our uh, workshop today, the time. And then you want to set that aside and you're going to take that paper and if you want the blank side to print, we're going to take the blank side and we're going to press it onto our aluminum foil. Oops, and see, I have water on my hand still so it's moving, <laughs> it's moving the marker that I had on this side around. Okay, so then you're just going to, you want to try to keep it pretty straight so it doesn't move around too much and then we're just going to Smooth it out with our hands. Okay. And then when I lift this up, 
The aluminum foil is probably going to stick a little bit. I'm going to flip that all the way over because it gets a little bit messy. And that is my, um, that's the background I came up with. Now, I still have some fluidity, fluidity in my um, ink here, so I'm going to try to move it around a little bit. The other thing you can do is do a reprint. So sometimes I'll take this, and hopefully you're on a surface that doesn't, can take a little bit of markers. So sometimes I'll do like another little print on top of it again. Don't do this unless you've got something underneath there that you don't care about because it gets kind of messy. So you can get color in some other spots, I guess is what I'm trying to do. And sometimes re-wetting it, like I have plenty of water on this one, but sometimes re-wetting it. So I want, I want my background to be pretty well like over the entire back, um, white sheet of paper. I don't like to see a whole lot of white, but maybe you don't mind that. Or maybe you want to experiment. It's kind of cool because it's bringing some of my um, pattern that I created is coming through, which is kind of kind of cool. Hopefully you guys can still see this. Okay. So if you had brushes or if you want to take it another direction, you could always um, kind of take, you know, if you had like a, a small paintbrush or watercolor brush, you can always move the... Uh, marker ink around with that as well or going back in and you know do some different watercolor techniques but this makes kind of a pretty background and remember we're going to be putting some envelopes on there so you won't you're not going to see the entire background so you can kind of pick and choose how you want to create your composition when we get all the pieces together so I'm going to take that aluminum foil and just uh, fold it up and set it aside for right now. You can always throw it in the garbage if you've got it handy. I didn't bring one in here with me. So, Okay, so we've got, we want to set this aside to let it dry because we don't want to put anything on it as it sits right now. But I'll just show you a couple of other, um, and you could be, while I'm chatting right now, you could be creating more uh, background options if you'd like. But I created some of these as well, so you can just see some other, it's very, it's, it's not something you have a whole lot of, um, not a lot of control in how it comes out, but I think that's part of what's kind of beautiful about the background. And you can create all different, and just experiment. Uh, some of the different patterns that you create on the aluminum foil will make different things happen. So have fun with that. Okay, so this is our background. We're gonna set that aside to dry. And in the meantime, we're gonna work on our envelopes. So hopefully I haven't lost anybody yet. Hopefully everybody's there with me. I wanted to share this quote that I found. Uh, we're going to be making, our envelopes are actually gonna be made out of a heart shape. So I found this quote and I think it's kind of timely and it's, I see clearly the object of my grief. I hold space for it in my heart and that's, a very famous Vietnamese Zen Buddhist monk who's also a peace activist, a poet, a writer, and I probably will not pronounce his name properly, but I'm going to try. His um, and and if you do a lot of reading, uh, you may have already heard of him. He's Thich Nhat Han, and that's a quote from him. So you could, well, I'll, I don't want to jump ahead of myself. We're going to start by taking the thinner of the two papers. So we just printed our background on the heavyweight paper, the one that could stand up to water. And now we're going to create some, the envelopes. Now, when I did this sample project, I did it with a really thick paper. And that's how I learned that that wasn't a good idea. <laughs> that it's much easier to create if you have like, um, like an origami paper, the six inch by six inch square. Now it does not have to be six inch square. 
if you have that kind of a paper, uh, that sheet of paper, this is some scrapbooking paper. It's white on one side and it's patterned on the other. And it does not have to be exact. I just, I use that uh, size as a perimeter, or excuse me, a parameter, because that, you can see, I can fit three of those on a nine by 12 inch sheet. So if you have a bigger piece of a background paper or you have a smaller piece, you can adjust the size of these any way you want. <clears throat> now I happen to have some heart, I make a lot of little tracers for things uh, when I do, when I teach kids. So I happen to have a heart tracer, but I didn't figure everybody had one of those <laughs> in their uh, artistic arsenal. So I am going to try to turn this over. We're going to fold, I mean, it helps if you have a square because we want to make sure this is symmetrical. But go ahead and get yourself a piece of paper. And if you have like, um, here, if you have an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, you can always kind of create, like I said, it doesn't have to be a perfect square, but you can create um, something close to a square out of that and just use that and fold that in half too, okay? And that's what I was saying, even if you have just plain white paper, you can always, uh, we could always decorate this with the markers that you have. You can make this a patterned or uh, you can make this a colored paper or patterned paper with the supplies you have today and then um, make something that's complementary to your background because you know you have these, these marker colors. So we're going to fold our paper in half. And if it's square, it doesn't really matter which direction. And then you're going to draw, and maybe I should do this with a Sharpie so you can see a little bit better. I'm going to try to do this upside down so that you can see it right side up. Um, we're going to draw ourselves a half of a heart. Well, that was pretty good, I'd say, for being upside down. So we're going to do just a half a heart. And I usually try to start somewhere toward the bottom, come up on an angle. Not really sure how to direct someone on how to do a half a heart exactly, but you can kind of see the shape that I've created on here. It's kind of like a teardrop shape almost. If you flip it around, kind of half like a teardrop. Okay. Hopefully you can follow along with that. And then we're going to cut that out. And get our full heart. So if we have a half a heart and our Papers folded, then when we cut this out, we'll have a whole heart with a nice symmetrical, two sides that are totally symmetrical. And that's kind of the name of the game. Okay. So with the thinner paper, we've created a heart shape. Now we're gonna do some folds and sometimes it takes a little practice. So don't make your first folds completely, you know, don't, um, crease them really hard because you might need to adjust them a little bit. We're going to try to, we're going to fold in these sides of the heart like so. And there I went and creased it like I told you not to. <laughs> um, we're going to try to put these in as evenly. We want these to come in as evenly as possible. And I can already tell that mine isn't even. Now, if you're doing this with a patterned piece of paper, you need to decide what, what you want to be on the outside. So, like here's the, the patterned piece I had. Move these down. I had this patterned piece. If you're working on a patterned piece you want to do that has white on the other side, definitely do your heart shape on that white side. It's much easier to see it and cut it out. And then when you have your little heart shape, with the pattern, if you want the pattern to be on the outside, then you want to make sure that you're um, working on, on the white side. Like, so we, I would have it open up to the white side and I'd be folding it like so. Okay. Like this. And that would make, that'll make the pattern on the outside. Now it's, well, we'll wait, I'll wait. Okay. So that's that. And then we're going to fold the side that has the two halves of our heart here, not the pointed side, but the other side. We're going to fold this up. 
to meet. Mine's a pretty deep shaped heart here. And I'll flip this around so that you can see it like that. So if I had this upside down, you're going to fold these two in, then you're going to fold this up, and then we're going to fold this down. Now mine is a little bit off here, as you can see. This is where I'm going to work on the creases. So I have this little hole right here, which is very sad. Um, but I could move it up a little bit further, I think, if I pull these in. Well, you can also move this down. Let's do that. That's easier. So if you have a little gap there, you can always move this down so that to cover it. So this is our little flap here. Okay. All right, so a couple, I'm gonna do it a couple more times just so you can get to see it. I don't know if it's easier, probably easier in all. Well, let me do the pattern one, it might be easier to see. Okay, so I want the pattern to be on the outside, so I'm folding inward toward the, the center on the white side of this. <clears throat> so I'm folding in the two sides like so. So here's my heart, folding in these two sides. I'm folding this part up here I'm going to turn it around so it looks like this. And then the, the point actually will be like the, the little triangle on the back of the envelope. Okay. Hopefully everybody got that. And I know some of you might be making some comments. I've got Miss Catherine's helping me out from Atlantic Center for the Arts. So she might be responding to some of the things that you are asking or any information that you um I'd love to know where everybody's from. If everybody's local, I'm coming to you live from my home studio in New Smyrna Beach. New Smyrna Beach, Florida. This is worldwide, so <laughs> just in case anybody's out there from another place in the world. I did have somebody on the last live I did uh, from Canada, so. So, anyway, if you want to pipe in and just tell me where you're from, and that would be kind of cool. And then... If I'm, because I'm taping this on my phone, I can't necessarily respond very easily while we're doing the project, but I will definitely uh, make every effort to do so when I get off of the uh, live presentation. So just know that. Okay. So hopefully everybody's gotten the gist of the, the heart-shaped envelope. Now, I think it's kind of cool maybe to even write a message or write something you could do words again I, I incorporate typography in a lot of the work that i do my art my own artwork so i love words and i love creating uh, different patterns with words so or line you know just simply line or letters so you could write something inside of this envelope too think about that as an option um something that's even a little bit more secretive if you don't want to share your feeling about something or you don't necessarily um, I don't know it's just another another way to get something that is inside of you outside of you in in a in a very personal way intimate way so if you want to you could do something inside of these if you do want to do something like that inside of the envelope then you want to probably make sure that you do that before we start um, putting any adhesives on here so with the nice thin paper, we're going to put just a little bit, hopefully you got your glue stick handy. We're just gonna put a little bit, I guess I should have checked my glue stick, here we go, okay. <laughs> Some of these get dried out over time. So you're gonna put just a little bit of glue to, to, to um, adhere these seams. So we just want a little bit though, because we wanna have room for to be able to put uh, another piece of paper in here. So we're going to just put a little bit of glue on the, if this is our envelope, we want to just put it on these little edges here. Okay. So leave yourself enough room to be able to um, slide some other paper inside of here. This might take a minute to just set up. Um, so I'm going to set that aside. And then you'll want to do that a couple more times maybe. If you want to fill up the whole, if your paper is 9 by 12 like mine, you can, um, like I said, three fits on there really nicely. 
and three is one of those design numbers, you know, keep it odd numbers, design, uh, rule of thirds, all kinds of artistic type things, type of rules. They come in thirds and threes. So, but you don't have to. You could do a bigger heart and do um, one, you know, just one on there. You know, make it more of the size of like a letter, um, like a full letter size envelope. So, but this is how you generally would put together your little envelope. Okay, so we've got the envelopes and we've got our background. And my background is now dry, so that's good. Now this paper is not a paper that is probably, um, I might have thought better about the background color that I chose for this, this color combination is not really speaking to me. <laughs> but, um, Maybe I have another background here. Your background should dry pretty quickly. There's not a ton of water on it. If you have a good thick paper, it's probably already absorbed into it. So, eh, this one's okay, I guess. Maybe my design better than this one. Okay. So basically then, all we're going to do is take our little envelope. And I like the double-sided tape. And I just literally put a couple of... Um, strips on this. I don't know that I want to adhere this to this background, to be honest. So, but you're just going to put a couple of different, or excuse me, a couple of, use maybe like the double-sided tape or scotch tape. You could use, uh, you could use like an Elmer's glue if you have something, a liquid glue, even the, in the glue stick, even the glue stick will probably be fine as long as your paper weight is light. Um, and you want to place those on your background. So you could turn this horizontally if you wanted um, or leave it vertical like I did the sample project and then decide, you know, like I said, it's so personal to everybody as to what they might put in these little envelopes. You know, maybe you need more than three and then determining how you want to lay those out. So if there's, these are the kinds of little things as an artist you can um, determine where you want to put things. So I don't particularly like this blob like down here on this background. So I might put something on top of it. So nobody gets to see the blob I made with the, the watercolor. So there's a lot of things that as the artist, you know, we're there that not everybody needs to know we're there. So and you can do that with the different pieces you add. And then you could use uh, another piece of when I did the sample project, I used another piece of uh, the scrapbooking paper and I could write my little note on here. I can fold it up however you like and slide it in to our little envelope like so. And that I think is it. I think that's pretty much all the pieces you could use a plain white piece of paper for this part and then I haven't adhered these um, I haven't closed these little envelopes I've left them open but if you wanted to you could put another little dot again these this paper is much thicker so it's hard to um, it's hard to get anything to really stick um, but if you've got the lighter weight paper the Elmer's glue stick or some other type of glue stick, you could put just a little dot here on the corner or on the um, point and just hold it down with your finger. If you have like some people I know have those really cool um, like a wax stamp where you could put like a little glob of wax and just stamp it kind of um, medieval style. You could use uh, any kind of little sticker or anything if you wanted to adhere it with something like that. I mean, the possibilities truthfully are endless. And then think about who you might want to write um, your note to, or maybe it's not to someone. Maybe it's just, like I said, maybe it's, um, I usually choose a word each year to kind of set the tone for the entire year. Maybe you choose some words that have some significance or some meaning to you and just put the word in here. And seal it. Maybe it's something that you come back to um, sometime later in the future. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's something that gets sealed away. I know 
when I was uh, talking about the artist's way and Julia Cameron, um, she says, don't bother going back to reread your morning pages. They, they serve their purpose when you get the pencil on the paper or the pen on the paper. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know what feels right to you and what would serve you best, but that's what this is all about. It's about finding, um, finding your way in this world and using art as a way to express that. So, and hopefully this little project gave you some ideas. A lot of times for me, it's not about the project completion, but sometimes it's about the inspiration that comes when you're completing it. Think about maybe why you chose the colors you did or, you know, what feelings that those things have uh, kind of churned up. So I know when I looked at the background on my sample piece, um, I had done this right after I lost my dog, which he was a huge part of my life and um, still is still think about them every single day and when I looked at this background I noticed that I had used blues and with this watery kind of background it reminded me of tears and I don't you know at the time I didn't really give it much thought but when I looked back at it so kind of take a minute and, and take a look at what you've created and and see if there's something there something that you might want to take note of or pause on I think, hey, I think that, um, like I said, this project, while you're creating it, um, may, might set uh, one set of emotions um, kind of whirling, and then once you sit back and you take a look at it after the fact, you might find that it has some other significance or meaning that you... That's kind of where those, uh, the subconscious plays. It's kind of in, in these little details that you create. So I might be able to, um, I might be able to answer some questions here, but I think I'm going to have to do so by turning on my laptop back there. And if you have any questions, I, I'm just going to check out and see whether you did or not. And I think I'm pretty good on time. Oh, I got like 15 minutes. That's the fastest I think I've ever presented uh, any art project. Hopefully I've, I did so in a manner that wasn't too quick or wasn't, um, that didn't make you feel like you were being um, rushed. But here's our project completed. And I'm sure, see I was doing one of everything. So if you are out there and you are trying to do this project um, with me, you may have been doing a few of them, so it might take you a little extra time. Let me just check the laptop. Let me just scooch back here. Because I don't know that I can do this any other way. And let's see. If anybody is out there. Anybody out there? And if we were all together live in attendance, um, well, you're live in attendance now, but if we were all together, we would have some kind of discussion or I would ask everybody if they wanted to share anything about what, you know, their project or what they may have been able to, what they might've gotten out of it, we wouldn't have that discussion in person, so. Well, see, now I can see myself here, but I can't really see any. Hmm. Oh, here you are. Okay. Oh, that's a cool idea. Dee Dee actually used, um, well, you guys can read these too, but use magazine paper for the envelopes. That's awesome. I love that idea. 
and thank you guys all for being with me today. I appreciate your your attendance and I'm glad we were able to share some time together. Hopefully, like I said, you were able to get something out of this um, out of this workshop, something that might be able to propel you forward and give you some strength and and help you kind of get through everything. Like I said, right now we're in a really heavy period of time, but you know, life tends to have those periods along the way, whether there's a pandemic or not. So use these, these tools and, and hopefully you'll be able to use, um, use them in the future for future rough patches, if you will. Um, don't forget to fill out that survey. Um, oh, Allie, I'm so sorry. Yeah, it's rough. There's, um, again, the series that I've been teaching has, has had a, kind of an undertone of dealing with grief. And, and until you feel that really heavy grief, you, you can't possibly, like I said, I, I don't think, I, I read something or someone told me that you don't ever, um, you don't ever, um, oh, what was the quote? It was lovely too. You don't move past grief, you move through it. And, and I don't know that you ever, not to be morbid, but I don't know that you ever stop moving through it. I don't think that the, the people that have made the kind of impact on you that, or the events, because things like divorce and, um, and losing friendships. I mean, there's all types of different grief and, and I don't think those kinds of things, you, you, if they made the kind of impact to make you feel love, then they will also make you feel a really heavy grief when they're gone. So ah, I gotta take a deep breath. <laughs> um, so being able to wor um, work through those things and, and art helps in, in those cases all cases, but especially when you're dealing with something like that. So thank you all for being with me today. Um, again, there's going to be a post, uh, post survey that they're going to have on the Atlantic Center for the Arts page. And I know they would love for you to fill that out. And if you didn't already, maybe do your pre-survey really quick before you do the post survey. Um, and I'd love to hear from you. If you would like to post some comments, again, I'll take a better look. Um, oh, it looks like Catherine just popped that post workshop survey link down below. So if you wouldn't mind filling that out for us, greatly appreciate it. And, um, and they've got a ton of, it looks like a lot of them are on Saturdays, but there's a ton of different offerings on live, um, uh, Facebook live events mm -hmm. on Atlantic Center for the Arts page. So take a look at those in their events section. I don't know them all off the top of my head, um, but there's a few that I will be on myself. So maybe I'll see you again there. If you want to share anything that you um, have done today and you don't want to do it publicly, you can email me at hp at heatherpastor.com. That's my email address. I'd love to see what you created or what you may have, um, what you may have been able to process uh, through putting together this project and again, hope to, hope to see you all shortly. I'm hoping that I might have an opportunity to do more of these. I think I have one scheduled in July and quite possibly again before that. So again, Heather Pastor, artist ambassador for Atlantic Center for the Arts. Happy to have had you all here on this Facebook live event, Heal and Reveal. And I will look forward to seeing you all soon somewhere. Keep creating art and have fun.